Yeah, that's nice. What's up, guys? It's RevJ again. Uh, generally, the in-car vlog is not something I'm the biggest fan of. However, in this case, I'm doing it to illustrate a point, and that point is you can actually hear me. Uh, if you guys remember any of the things I've done from uh, from in the Hatred Copter 606010, uh, or even in my Blazer, uh, which was my daily and kind of my winter beater, uh, you couldn't hear anything uh, at all. And I was shouting over tires, and I was shouting over all sorts of stuff, and I, I, I still love the 66, and I will be back shouting in that thing hopefully sooner than later. But it was about damn time the Blazer got replaced. I was too big for that thing, just my back was hurting in that seat. It's not a tiny vehicle, but I'm 6'4", it just wasn't the most comfortable. I wanted to upgrade, and I had been looking for a, a full-size Chevy truck, or a Tahoe, or a Yukon, or, or something along those lines, Escalades. But man, in the used truck market, when you're just gonna pay cash for it, right now, especially up north here in Wisconsin, there's not a lot of good rust-free trucks. And so, for a long time, I've been looking for one. And actually, I had just talked to some guys uh, over on the 67 to 72 Chevy truck forum, where I post my build on the 66, uh, about it being so hard to find a clean used truck these days. And a lot of the used trucks are rusty up here, or busted, or they're lifted on stupid wheels. And like, I don't mind lifted trucks, but just, don't, you know, so many people, oh, I don't have the stock wheels, or I don't have this or that, I'm kind of ranting, but point is, they're just not as easy to come by as they used to be, uh, and for a reasonable price, let alone. So finally, after a shit ton of looking, uh, I finally bought a new daily driver, and uh, I guess you'd call it a shop truck, although it's not 100% a truck, because what I'm riding in right now is a 2005 uh, GMC Yukon SLT Auto Ride. Basically, it is a loaded ass GMC Yukon. Uh, it's got pretty much every option. Only thing it doesn't have is the Denali package. This has new tires on it. It's got the beautiful GMC 17 inch wheels, leather, power seats, heated seats, adjustable pedals, moonroof. It's got three row seating, which I'll show you in the back there. I'll take the rear seat out because I'm not going to leave that thing in. Uh, it's got front and rear AC with two separate ACs and two separate sets of controls. It's got the Bose system. Uh, it's got a moonroof. It's just loaded, man. It's got auto ride, which is the uh, air leveling suspension, which generally is not something I would want in a used car, but well, this thing is a special case, man. The guy who I bought it from is a retired firefighter, and he basically gave me service records since like 20 some thousand miles. Sort of light charcoal isn't my favorite interior. It's the real light gray, but man, is it in good shape and it's comfortable, so I really cannot argue with it. Um, they didn't do a black interior in these, and coming from the Blazer, there was a black interior, but you know what? In the hot sun, I don't miss it. Did I just slap the camera there? Uh, in the hot sun, I don't miss it, and for as cool as black leather looks, I'm okay without it, man. Got the turn signals in the mirrors, little indicators. Um, every option I can think of on the inside, like I said, it just doesn't have the six liter and it doesn't have the Denali grill, but otherwise it is. Oh, I can't remember, were Denali's all wheel drive? This thing is a regular push button four wheel drive, which living in Wisconsin, personally, I like. I wanna be able to manually turn the four wheel drive on and go, hey, now it's snowing, now I'm gonna deal with four wheel drive high, or now I'm gonna put it in four low to get out of a spot or something like that. So uh, in that case, man, it's exactly what I wanted. Ah, it's the freeway backing up here. It is, uh, Apparently the beginning of our new rush hour here, which never used to be, but it is now. Uh, but it illustrates uh, something really well. Again, this thing is comfortable. That auto ride is just silky smooth. Uh, like I said, the guy gave me tons of service records. He actually had the auto ride compressor replaced, so I don't have to worry about that, at least for a while. Um, like I said, it's got newer tires on. It's got the 5.3, but it's got Hydro Boost. So it's got four wheel disc brakes with Hydro Boost. If you guys follow my channel, uh, you know I rebuilt a Hydro Boost unit. Some people don't know much about them. They're kind of this mystery, but they're not insanely hard to work on. Uh, and I love to have them in this. It's just, it's a really unique braking system. I like the hydraulic braking pressure from it. The steering is nice and comfortable. It's got steering wheel controls. Like I said, it's got the Bose system with the sub in the center console. Uh, I think we'll probably be upgrading that. So I guess it's a good time to talk a little bit about what we're gonna do with this thing. Uh, it's staying black. The front windows are for sure gonna get tinted out to match the rest, because you gotta do that. That's essential. Uh, but I wanna keep it fairly simple and drivable. Now, I've said that about every vehicle I've ever owned, and then half of them got airbagged and motor swapped. Uh, we're definitely gonna put a tune in it. Probably put a video up about that, about how even on a stock vehicle, uh, an HP tuner's you know ECM tune 
can net you fuel economy, it can net you some power, it can net you some drivability. Of course, having a good tuner is a big part of that, but that's not an issue for me. Uh, and also a little bit about, you know, we're probably not gonna throw an exhaust on this thing. Maybe I'll throw an intake on it, maybe not, probably not, I don't know. It's in such good stock shape that usually I wouldn't advocate for leaving something stock, but as like a daily driver and occasional occasional hauler, uh, it'll work so well. It's got enough power to pull the trailer with the 66 on it if I want it to. So what else? Oh, it's got the DVD system in the back. I don't know how useful that's gonna be for me since I don't really have anyone back there ever and I can't watch it and I'll be putting in a, a unit up here most likely. Uh, but it's got it. Uh, has a full extra set of floor mats, cargo cover. It's got the little stuff in the cargo net area and you know all the little extra weird attachments. Probably end up making a custom grill for it. I really do like the GMC grill better than the Chevy grill. However, I think there's as usual room for improvement. There's a guy just walking down the freeway. Where are you going, bro? Okay, not used to that. We wanna put a system in it. Uh, not right away, but eventually I will. There's some reasons for that. Uh, I'd like to put one of the newer Pioneer units that's got like the Android streaming capability and stuff like that so I can do nav and uh, slacker and stuff like that. Probably gonna leave the Bose in, but I'd like to add on to it. Uh, most likely putting in at least a sub. God, this person is really just, they can't see over the wheel and they're terrible at driving. That is one of the things I dislike about doing these car vlog things, other than the fact that in general they're kind of played out. Thank you, get off the fucking road. So much better. Uh, this thing's got some pickup with the 5.3, it gets out of its own way. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna do that. I like the wheels that are on it for a stock wheel. And I think because the tires are good, they're definitely going to be uh, suitable year-round, but I'm thinking maybe a slightly larger diameter wheel. No, I don't want to put like 28s on it, although if somebody wants to give me a sub 28s, I'll rock them. Uh, not going to change the ride height, going to leave everything like that the same, because ground clearance is fairly important here when it gets snowy and shit in the winter. Uh, but I wouldn't mind going to a larger wheel, possibly something like a newer, uh, a newer generation Escalade or Tahoe or Yukon wheel. There's a couple of really cool designs. I think are factory 20s. 22 on these can still run a decently sized tire, uh, so you don't get insane low sidewall issues or anything. But I don't know. The high profile sidewalls that are on these right now make it go down the road pretty smooth. You don't feel a lot of the little shit. You get semi truck blowouts and stuff here, so something like a 26 would be a little ridiculous. 24, man, maybe with a perfect tire on it and somebody hooked it up on a price, I would uh, I'd consider doing that. I'll tell you a funny story from this. It's got so many fucking options on it that the first time I was driving at home, I was worried about something leaking. I thought maybe a rear window was down or there was a way the hatch window could go down, but nope, not the case. Uh, I just got the rear AC stuck on because I got a separate set of controls and I did not know where they were. I was mentioning how hard it is to find a rust-free Chevy truck like this, especially of this generation, but take a look at the lower door seams. Take a look at the door inners. Take a look at the hatch on this thing. There's no rust. The couple little seams where there is a hint of condensation where rust might want to start, uh, I'll be cleaning those up in a future video and just uh, putting a little either brush on or spray on rust preventer in there just to keep it from happening. This thing is so clean. I really want to keep it that way. That's one of the most important things. But, uh, you know, tint, a system, maybe a set of wheels, that never hurt anybody. I'm speaking optimistically because it's quite possible that I will abandon that and do a bunch of ridiculous stuff with it. But for right now, that's not the case, guys. What do you think? I mean, it's clean as hell, right? Especially for the year. Have you guys been looking for a full-size Chevy or a Tahoe or a Yukon? Uh, do you guys have one of these loaded ass Yukons, what have you done to it? Uh, I've seen some bagged out on huge wheels, I've seen some crazy systems. If you guys are into any of that, let me know. Post up your channel, post up your pics, whatever. You can't post pics on YouTube, can you? Uh, get at my social media, I'll have it here on the screen. Uh, let me Like I said, I know there's a lot of C10 clubs and Yukon clubs and Tahoe clubs. Show me what you guys have going on, give me some ideas. I haven't owned a full size like this, uh, not since probably like a 95 or a 96 and not a Tahoe or a Yukon. So, so get at me, let me know what you think guys, like I said, social media on the screen. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I had to apologize for it being a car vlog video, but considering it's a new car, it's not the worst way to do it, right? Right? Am I getting myself off the hook? I don't know. Uh, this is a rebuild everything video. Actually, if you re if you recall my first rebuild everything video, this is a replace everything video because the Blazer is still around, but it's not the uh, it's not the main bitch no more. And. Uh, and now this is in. I don't know what to call it. I kind of want to put a project name on it because it's sort of a project, but I don't have a good name for it. Let me know what you guys think. You got a good name for it? Uh, that's inviting trouble, I think, but I'll still read the comments anyway. 
Uh, so that's it for now, guys. I'm rambling, which means it's usually the time I have to wrap these up. Use the hashtag rebuild everything for your rebuild everything projects. What are you rebuilding? Houses, cars, your fucking life. Let me know. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's comfortable. Oh, I can almost lay the seat down. I can sleep in this thing.